Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the Chinese yuan US dollar cross crossed over the gold spot price in US dollars. So, I've talked in the past about beta, and a beta is just simply a measure of how markets track each other. And uh, for this chart, I'm not really going to offer a lot of analysis because uh, I've thought about this a lot and it's kind of mind boggling. So I, I'm really going to ask for your opinion on what this means. Now, the beta is actually fairly strong on this chart. Uh, I've drawn in a couple of arrows here pointing to these divergence areas and they lasted for a couple years. But you can see that uh, barring these two blue arrow divergence areas, uh, the beta is actually fairly strong for these charts. Now, we'll start off with the financial crisis because if you remember, the financial crisis started in 2008 and uh, gold took a hit when we saw Lehman and uh, Merrill Lynch and the rest of them go under. Now, while this was happening, the Chinese currency was continuing to gain in value against the U.S. dollar until they stabilized it. So you can see that this, this line here from basically the beginning of the financial crisis, roughly in the summer of 2008, that's really when it started to happen, the Chinese pegged their currency to the dollar. And we had the gold price correction and then gold price rally. And then as soon as we had gold uh, come up and uh, start to, uh, well, it had made new highs earlier, but it, until it started to really move up, then we saw the Chinese currency re released from this peg. Now, then we saw the move that happening in uh, coordination with silver where gold spiked up to 1900 and you can see that right there and the Chinese currency continued to rise but then once gold had peaked and started to seriously fall uh, we had again another divergence with the Chinese currency rising and gold falling and then the Chinese currency topped and that's right here at the beginning of 2014 so Gold continued to fall, had a little a brief rally, and now you can see where we're at here is that both gold and the Chinese currency are falling. So what does that mean? Well, I don't know. I'm just going to throw some things out there. Uh, does it have to do with Trump and his trade policies? Uh, the, the trend that was in place with both of these really was accelerated. You can see uh, this point here is from back in the summer. So we're really just on a continuation of the trend and with the election of Trump the trend has continued. The Chinese currency is weakening and gold is weakening. So that's all I'm going to say about that. I, I don't really know why. If you have reasons and there are a lot of complex things we can talk about here about why this would be happening but the beta is strong uh, there's a lag but the two are fairly highly uh, correlated with each other so whatever the reason is uh, I'm curious as to what you think that is so let's talk about how bad this debt situation is here now I've got an article here that is uh, talking about the f analogy I like to use frequently is the, the people riding in the cart versus the people pulling the cart. But let's look at the debt to the penny here. You can see here with the 18th of November, we have this 19895 print. Now that's not the highest. The day before we had 18 or I'm sorry, 19897, but you can see we're very close to that $20 trillion debt uh, number. And we know that the bond market is 
is starting to put in what appears to be a top. It appears to be reversing. And that would have a tremendous impact on finances if we get serious rises in, in interest rates. But you can see here, a year ago to this day, we had a debt, a total public outstanding debt of $18.658 trillion, and we're now at $19.895. So that is a good $1.2 trillion difference, and that's the amount of debt that we're adding. So let's look at this cart analogy, and I'm going to take you to an article on Zero Hedge about uh, the pay that we're seeing for government workers. And uh, I'm going to try to convince you that uh, what's going on is kind of a, um, a backdoor communism where they're, they're making us a communist nation through just a slow process of increasing the size of the government and basically destroying the private sector. But this is a uh, cartoon about how uh, the, this is from International Liberty Restraining Government in America and Around the World. But uh, you can see two uh, cartoons here about uh, the cart. And that's a really good analogy because uh, Basically, the people riding in the cart aren't working. They're just benefiting from the labor of others. And you can see this is uh, labeled how the welfare state begins. And you can see there's a couple of things here. First of all, you have just uh, the people in the cart. Really, you can see they're just a, a single mother with a child. And then you have, uh, I'm not sure what this couple is supposed to represent, maybe just a poor couple. And then you have everyone else, all the other people, men and women, pulling this cart. And you can see that it's a very easy proposition. You have a huge number of people pulling a very small number of people. That's how the welfare state begins. Now, this is closer to where we are right now. This is how the welfare state ends. And you can see they say, yes, you can. So you've got a cheerleader here who's also riding in the cart. That would represent the politicians and then you can see a large number of people really doing nothing here. You've got two people sitting here, uh, appear to be at a movie theater. You've got a guy talking on a cell phone, another one talking on a cell phone. You've got a guy stuffing his face. You've got a waiter here. You've got someone else talking on a cell phone. So you've got a very large number of people riding in the cart now, and you've got some people who are straining very badly to pull this cart. And this is the situation that we're looking at here. Uh, I'm going to show you an article here on in a minute on uh, the, the public workers in California, which is just a, shocking, but let's read this. These images are remarkably accurate. The welfare state starts with small programs targeted at a handful of genuinely needy people, but as politicians figure out the electoral benefits of expanding programs and people, figure out that they can let others work on their behalf, the ratio of producers to consumers begins to worsen. Eventually, even though the moochers and looters should realize that it's not in their interest to overburden the people pulling the wagon, the entire system breaks down. And that's exactly what I think we're going to see here. Now let's look at this article from Zero Hedge this is absolutely shocking. This is about the number of public employees that are making over $100,000 a year in California. And yes, that number is 200, over 200,000 government workers in California are making over $100,000 a year. Open the Books is back with another important government transparency report. This time, the organization looked closely at California payrolls. Sorry, I had to expand that. And found that 218,000 public sector employees earn six-figure salaries, in many cases far above that threshold, at a cost of $35 billion dollars. 
If Californians are fine with this sort of thing, more power to them. But it's important to be knowledgeable about where and how tax dollars are spent. Below are a few highlights from Adam Andrzejewski's Open the Books recent article at Forbes titled $100,000 Minimum Wage for 220000 Highly Compensated California Public Employees Cost Taxpayers $35 Billion. In many states, public service has little to do with serving the public and everything to do with using the public's money to serve politicians. Whenever we open the books, California is consistently among the worst offenders. Recently, we found animal collection curators making $110,000, city librarians earning $222,000, public utility commission bosses at $550,000, and county hospital doctors making $1.2 million. This spring at Forbes, we exposed 50,000 public employees in Illinois earning six-figure salaries who cost taxpayers $8 billion. In California, the numbers are exponentially larger. The 218,000 employees making six figures who cost $35 billion. For example, Illinois has 72 city managers out earning every governor of the 50 states. But in California, the salaries of assistant city managers average $201,000. Using our interactive mapping tool quickly review by zip code, the 220,000 California public employees who earn more than $100,000. In total, there's roughly $35 billion in total benefits flowing, etc. So you can see the problem here. And, And this isn't even talking about the pensions. This is just the wages. But you know they're pumping these wages up so they can get the benefits. So this situation is coming. We're very close to the second picture here. Uh, it, traditionally, it's always been the case that government workers make less wages than private sector workers, but have better benefits. Now we're in a situation where government workers make significantly more. In fact, multiples of what private sector workers make. And they also have benefits that are multiple of what private sector workers make. And the cart is quickly coming to a screeching halt. Now, the big question is going to be, what is Trump going to do? And this chart definitely gives me pause. And again, uh, I'd love to have your comments on this of how the price of gold is correlating with the price of the Chinese yuan. But something big is coming, and I predicted for a while now that Trump was going to win. I thought that the Trump election would result in them having an excuse to collapse the system using Trump as the bankruptcy president. It it seems to be the only way out now. Uh, I'm very curious as to what Trump is going to propose. I saw some proposals recently about the national debt and the things that we're seeing, uh, I was seeing from the Trump uh, spokespeople was nothing significant, nothing concrete, just a lot of talk, but nothing really seriously addressing uh, this, the serious debt issue that we have. So we're going to find out very, very soon here uh, what direction the Trump administration is going to take. Now, my money is on uh, the fact that the Trump is going to, in one way or another, print up a large amount of money. And some people have speculated that by the time Trump leaves, we're going to be talking about a national debt of $40 trillion dollars. That's possible. Um, I I don't think these things can go on forever, but they definitely have gone on longer than uh, I ever thought they could go on. So uh, when Obama got into office, we were talking about roughly $10 trillion in national debt. When he's leaving office now, we're talking about roughly $20 trillion. So he has essentially doubled the national debt. And it's possible that if Trump wants to be a popular president, he may do the exact same thing with infrastructure spending and uh, building up our factories. 
Uh, how long can this go on? I can't say. But uh, the fact that they are able to suppress gold while the Chinese currency loses value is uh, very, very interesting. And uh, we're going to see how this turns out very soon. And we'll talk to you next time.